Welcome back. So this is our fourth uh, program in the Senior Health Series on Understanding Chronic Conditions. Joining me today, I have Christine Histed from the Tri-County Office on Aging. She is the, pro the PATH Programs Manager. Um, and so I've been wanting to have her come and share a little bit about some of the really great evidence-based programs that the Tri-County Office on Aging offers for seniors, and especially as it, as it comes to chronic conditions. A lot of the programs that she oversees tie directly in with this theme. So she's going to take it from here and um, kind of give us an overview of some of the programs that are available, and hopefully you'll leave today with a better understanding of some of the resources that the Tri-County Office on Aging offers. Um, for seniors as well as uh, those the resources for understanding chronic conditions. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, hi everybody. Um, did you turn this on? Okay. Is this on? Okay. Um, so welcome everybody. I am Christine from Tri-County Office on Aging and you all get a gold star for being here because that traffic on Hagedorn was um, unexpected and um, quite uh, a bit to handle. So um, thank you for being here um, and wanting to learn more about um, the PATH programs that Tri-County Office on Aging offers. Um, so by a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with Tri-County Office on Aging? So pretty much almost everybody, that's great. So out of the folks who raised their hands, what services, um, have you received from Tri-County or that you know of? Well, this, this is one of them. I've seen had this before. Um, and then um, most of the programs I have, because I work with the foster welfare program, RSVP, mm. and every month we had uh, mandatory in-service and they would have speakers. And then uh, in my building, Stacy uh, Mason is yeah. our service coordinator. Yes. And she sometimes gets, you know her? Yes. Yeah, she's, uh, she used to work at Tri-County, actually. Right. She yeah. And uh, she, now she has people come in to speak. I think the other day they had something on osteoporosis. Okay, great. Yeah. So um, it sounds like you've um, heard of a wide variety of services that we offer. Perfect. Hey, that works. That works. That's great. Um, what about anyone else? Um, what services have you heard of about Tri County that we offer? Taxes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one um, uh, during that. Taxes. Yep, yep, so we work with AARP um, to have um, tax preparers come into our building pre-COVID um, to help folks with um, their taxes every year, to file their taxes. Except this year. Except this year. Well, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yep. I got delivered meals for 24 years. Yeah, great. So um, you actually delivered the meals? Oh, well, thank you so much for volunteering. That's a great service. We could not do what we do without the volunteers like you and so many other people in the community. So um, Tri-County does a lot of different programs. We are most well known for our um, Meals on Wheels program or our congregate dining program, um, but we do a lot more than that, um, as a few of you mentioned. Part of what we do, which is a very, very small part, is our evidence-based programs. And I basically am that department <laughs> at Tri-County Office on Aging. Um, has anyone ever heard of any of those programs that are listed. So Diabetes Path, Chronic Pain Path, Matter of Balance. Okay, um, Powerful Tools for Caregivers or Creating Confident Caregivers. I've got one. You didn't know that existed. Okay, well that's what this is all about, is to tell you what we do that most people don't realize that we do. So which program did you know of? Um, managing Concerns About Falls. It was a um, multi-day. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. And where did um, did you take it yourself? I took it at the Delta Township in Richmond. Oh, great! Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so um, hopefully, it was a good experience for you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So what we were just um, talking about is that matter of balance, um, managing concerns about falls workshop, which is a fall prevention workshop, which I'll get into. Um, so as um, what's your name? Betty, Betty, thank you, Betty. Um, so as Betty mentioned, um, we usually do these workshops in person. So the workshop she um, attended was at Delta 39ers Enrichment Center on the west side of Lansing, but we go a lot of different places. And I'll get into all the nitty gritty. And this is all very informal, so if you have any questions, please just stop me and ask. Um, I want this to be beneficial for all of you. So these are all of the evidence-based programs that Tri-County Office on Aging directs 
directly offers. Now, funding for this comes through the Older Americans Act um, uh, to offer these evidence-based programs. And evidence-based programs means that it's been researched with many years or decades of research behind it, um, and it's been proven to work and show results in the participants that go through. So these are not programs that we developed, we wrote. These are programs that are well known in the community, um, not just in the United States, but sometimes worldwide, depending on which program we're talking about. Um, like the diabetes path and chronic pain path workshops, for example, are in many different languages and done across the world. So they're well known um, in its own right, um, but most people don't know about them. So we're going to focus on um, the two PATH programs first, the Diabetes PATH and Chronic Pain PATH. Um, but what I want to hear from you first, and you can just shout out what you think, what are some problems you have managing chronic disease, um, like diabetes or chronic pain, or it could be arthritis, osteoporosis. Um, what are some problems that you encounter? Mobility. Mobility? Mm -hmm. Learning how to deal with it when you don't want to take um, their pain medication. Yeah, so learning how to deal with it, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Like you don't want to take the medication, but you want to have a good quality of life. Right. Yeah, reasonable. Any other problems anyone has with managing diabetes or chronic pain? Getting other people to understand. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, you know, communicating between you and um, the other person, family members or friends or, you know, uh, um, any doctors, you know, for example, not, don't necessarily understand what you're going through as someone with a chronic condition. They know the disease but they don't know your journey in that disease, right? So um, we illustrated a few um, issues that we have with chronic disease management, and um, our doctors are really great at managing the medical aspect of those chronic diseases, but there's a lot more that goes into managing chronic disease than just the medical. Take your medications now, um, you know, on an empty stomach, et cetera, et cetera. It's like kind of the how-to, you know, how do I do this? I want to make changes, but how do I do that? Um, I want to communicate better, but how do I do that, right? So there's a lot of other social issues that go along with managing chronic disease that these workshops really focus on. So for our diabetes self-management program, our diabetes path, for example, um, this is what we call the toolbox. And this is what we reference in the workshop. Um, and this, you, you, you want to think about it as a literal toolbox, a box with a handle, um, the, all of the things that we're going to discuss in this workshop. So you can see healthy eating and physical activity are on there. That's important for diabetes management, of course. Um, but also what's important is understanding your emotions, stress management, um, problem solving, working with your healthcare providers, um, decision making, using your mind. So all of these things that your doctor, to be honest, doesn't have time to talk with you about, right? But these are life skills that are really needed when you're managing a chronic disease. Um, same thing with chronic pain path. Um, this is our toolbox, um, and we talk about physical activity um, quite a bit in the, the workshop. Um, how to incorporate physical activity when you have chronic pain. Um, don't want to take medication. You still want to do the things you want to do and have a great quality of life, but you don't know how to get there. Right? So that's what this workshop is about. Um, we talk about pacing and planning, so not doing too much not doing too little, so you're not out in the garden for four hours, but you're not sitting on the couch, you know, watching TV for four hours either. So it's finding that balance. You know, how do I do that? Right? It sounds simple, but in reality, it's not all that simple, right? We also talk a lot about um, Dis like our, using our mind, distraction techniques, um, realizing that our mind has a really powerful effect on how we feel and how we act. Um, and so we really look into to that. Um, we talk about sleep. Communication was in both of these toolboxes. So communicating, having people understand what we're going through is really important. Um, so we talk about that a lot in both of the workshops. 
Um, so you can see there's a lot of different tools that we talk about and how do I manage these two conditions. So evidence-based programs, there's a lot of words on this screen. Um, basically what it's saying is what are, what's the research that, um, uh, that has gone into these programs? I said that these are all evidence-based, meaning there's um, many years of research that's gone into them. And what does, that, what does that mean? What does that prove? And the results are up on the screen. Um, so just to kind of um, uh, uh, summarize, um, if someone goes through Diabetes Path, um, that workshop, there's significant improvements in depression, symptoms of hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, um, communication with your physicians, healthy eating, reading food labels, et cetera. Um, chronic pain path, um, people with chronic pain reported more energy, less dependence on other people. Um, improved mental health um, and can in, um, manage their everyday activities. Now that's really the goal of someone with chronic pain. We're not saying by going through this workshop we're gonna take away your pain because if you're going to a doctor, a pain clinic and they're not able to resolve that, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to resolve that either but we're gonna help you manage those symptoms so you can have a good quality of life, right? Um, so those are the two that I've been speaking about a lot. Um, and then matter of balance, which I'll get into more is our um, fall prevention workshop. So folks that go through that report improve improvement in viewing falls as manageable and controllable. Um, how many by a show of hands think that um, falls are a normal part of aging? Like it is absolutely expected to fall as you get older. Don't be shy. I see a few hands. And that's honestly, most people believe that. Most people believe that as you fall, or as you age, it is expected that you will fall. And that's not the case. There's always an underlying reason why you're falling, and it's important to get to that underlying reason. It's not okay just to accept, oh, well, I'm 80, I'm gonna fall. No, why are you falling? And to resolve that, because your life can change in an instant um, if you fall. Um, and have a fracture, for example. Um, Powerful Tools for Caregivers um, is a workshop that is for a non-professional caregiver um, to help improve their own self-care. Because the first thing to go when you start taking care of someone else is what? Yourself. Yourself, absolutely. So that's what this workshop focuses on. So improvement in self-care behaviors and so on. So you can you know, take a look at that slide, but basically all positive things um, come, from, come from these workshops. Um, some local results, um, I'm not gonna go too in depth. You can of course see this slide, um, but for our diabetes path, we measure pre and post results, <clears throat> excuse me. And so you can see increasing confidence in making meal plans, increasing confidence, preventing low blood sugar, managing um, days when you're sick so your blood sugar is not going all over the place, um, increased physical activity. One person said, this is the best diabetes education I've ever received. It dealt with all aspects of, dealing, of diabetes, not just food. Stress management, problem solving, action plans were very useful. So like stress management, for example, what do you think stress does to your blood sugar? It increases it, absolutely. Just by um, having stress in our life, it increases blood sugar. And then when we're stressed, do we feel like eating that salad versus you know, going for the pizza? Right, so it's a double whammy. So we talk about that. Um, for our chronic pain workshop, increasing confidence that they can do something other than taking medication to help their chronic pain. Um, increasing confidence dealing with emotional distress. That's the biggest thing with someone who has chronic pain that I have heard, heard in the workshops is they feel alone and isolated. And so this person said, I enjoyed this workshop very much. I learned that I'm not alone in dealing with pain. I also learned that to make action plans and to give me more confidence in knowing I can get things done. So you go from kind of feeling, you know, I can't do it to I can. Powerful tools for caregivers, again, same thing, you know, all positive results. Um, because of this workshop, I can communicate more effectively um, and take care of myself. It also increased my ability to cope and improve my attitude for life and caregiving. So if you've ever been a caregiver and your life has been immersed in um, taking care of somebody else, you can probably relate to that in some way. 
So what this really illustrates is, you know, you start with, eh, I don't know, I can't do it, I don't know how, maybe I want to, but you know, I just don't know the steps and how to do it, right? Um, and then by the end of the workshop, um, you're at a place where you're like, okay, yeah, I, I can do it. You know, like the wheels start turning and you think, yeah, there is something I can do in, any, in either any of those topics at hand. So that's the point of this workshop, right? Um, so now that you have kind of um, some um, overall knowledge, I'm gonna get to more of the nitty gritty of, you know, what does this look like in real life? Um, so these are all multi-week programs. Um, it was mentioned before that it was over consecutive weeks, right? So these are all behavior change workshops. If you went to a seminar on diabetes, for example, and, and listened to someone for an hour, what are you gonna change in your life after that one hour presentation? Maybe a little, but I doubt you're going to come away from that feeling so empowered that, yeah, I can do this, right? Yeah, you got it. You're absolutely right, yes. And that's exactly what these workshops offer. We meet in small groups, um, usually eight to 12 people or so, um, it kind of depends. Um, but we definitely have that camaraderie. We have that built-in support within each other because we wanna succeed, but we also wanna see the other people succeed. And we have a vested interest in, um, in them succeeding too. Because if we see they can do it, then what does that think for us? I can do it. Right? So it's trying to be relatable and start where you are. Um, so they're all multi-week programs. Um, the Matter of Balance program is two hours um, for eight sessions, so it's a 16-hour commitment. The other workshops are, depending on which workshop we're talking about, it's an hour and a half to two and a half hours, um, once a week for six weeks. Um, so it is a time commitment, um, but the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Um, if you don't put anything into it, you're not gonna get anything out of it, right? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, our website has everything, and then I'll list everything at the, um, at the end of the presentation too. Um, so weekly attendance is recommended. Um, we, it's not a drop-in workshop where it's like, okay, well, you're talking about healthy eating weeks two and four, but I'm not really interested in you know, all the other topics. That's not really how it goes, right? We want you to be there each week because of that camaraderie, but also build on the last week. Um, so <clears throat> the more you're there, the more you'll learn, the more you'll gain. We typically meet in community locations. So pre-COVID, um, we met um, anywhere people would congregate. Um, the hardest part about these workshops is getting people there and in the seats. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why um, we, we have trouble with recruitment. Um, you don't know about it, um, but also it's a commitment. Um, and so um, we wanna go where people are. We wanna be accessible. So we go to senior centers, the enrichment center. We go to libraries. We've held matter of balance in one of these rooms. I can't remember which one. Um, but we go to libraries, we go to churches, you know, pretty much anywhere where people feel comfortable going. We generally don't go to hospitals because who wants to go to a hospital, right? Nobody wants to go to a hospital. We want this to be an inviting atmosphere um, where you really want to be and not where you have to be, right? Um, it is led by two trained facilitators, so they go through training. Um, these are evidence-based programs, so they're structured programs. Um, so the people facilitating aren't necessarily nurses, dietitians, or anything like that. They're people that have vested interest in this. Maybe they have diabetes themselves. Maybe they have a spouse with diabetes or a parent with diabetes. So for example, I did not mention this earlier, um, but I'm a dietitian by trade. Um, and so when I go to a diabetes workshop and I'm facilitating, I don't say I'm Christine from Tri-County and I'm a dietitian. I just say I'm Christine um, and my mom has diabetes, right? So I'm trying to be more relatable um, and not saying I'm a dietitian, you do what I say 
to do, right? Um, so it's a very relatable program, um, and um, we rely on volunteers um, to facilitate these programs as well. So again, people that have the interest um, and experience in dealing with this. It doesn't help sometimes to have a doctor or a nurse tell us what to do when they've never walked in our shoes, right? Um, like I said before, group size about eight to 12, um, depending. It's usually highly interactive, so it's not just to sit and listen. I'm just gonna listen to what you have to say. Um, this is a, a place where we have discussions, we share ideas, um, et cetera, and that'll come um, to more light in just a few minutes. Um, a book or workbook is used for each of the workshops. So um, I do have books up here um, for the workshops that we offer if you're interested. They're all um, available like on Amazon. They're available to the public. You don't have to go through these workshops to get the book. You're just not gonna get the reinforcement, the like education. Um, but if you're interested in purchasing the book, you certainly can on your own. Um, it is normally a no or low technology program, um, which is great because we literally can go anywhere. If I had a big enough house, I could host a workshop in my house, right? But I've never done that <laughs> um, because I don't need necessarily any technology. Um, that's, of course, pre-COVID. So post-COVID, during COVID, we have not done anything in person. And it's all been online or over the phone. Um, and we're still not to that point where we were doing things in person. Um, but normally it is a no technology program. Um, target population 60 and older, but there are people that are younger um, in our workshops, but primarily it is for 60 and older. Um, there are no income or residency requirements to attend, um, and it's all donation-based. Um, there's nothing that goes through insurance. This, these are community programs. You don't, we don't charge for anything. If you want to donate, you can. If not, that is a-okay. Um, we're not really keeping track of anything like that. We just want people that need the program to get the program. Um, so if you... Um, uh, teaching methods that we use, I guess. Um, you can see there's a picture over there and that's very much what a PATH program looks like. Uh, maybe things are a little more spread out, but um, there are visuals up at kind of the front of the room and like on the walls. Um, and then everyone's in a U shape. So nobody's backs are towards each other um, because we're not in school. This isn't class, you know. Um, we all wanna be um, interacting with one another and have discussions. But of course, there's leader presentations where the leaders will give you information, of course. Um, there's a lot of discussion. There's a lot of brainstorming. So we pose questions to the group and we, um, we get their feedback. You know, what, you know, what makes your blood sugar go up? You know, and we ask that to the group and they say, you know, what makes blood sugar go up? Um, so it's really interactive. Um, there's modeling that happens, meaning um, as a leader for the workshop, anything that I ask you to do, I do as well. So um, we make action plans every week, which I'll get to in a second. Um, I make an action plan just like everybody else makes an action plan because I'm not perfect, right? I'm a dietitian, but I don't eat, you know, perfectly, you know, seven days a week, you know, three meals a day. Everybody has things to improve upon, and um, that's kind of what we're, we're communicating. You know, we're at your level, we're not above you, right? Um, some brief dramatization. Um, we use this in our communication um, activities where we have different scripts to illustrate a few communication styles. And then lastly, there's some paired activities or small group activities for our diabetes workshop, for like our menu planning um, and things of that nature. So um, throughout the six weeks, there's some paired um, activities. Um, so I'm gonna go more in depth again um, to each of the programs. And I've kind of already mentioned this um, along the way, but our diabetes program, although I haven't mentioned the first bullet point is, where was this program developed? Uh, Stanford University um, is the university that developed this program. And this program has been in existence for many decades, um, revised every few years with you know, different recommendations. But Stanford University is the original developers. 
Um, anyone who has um, type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, or type 1 diabetes um, can attend this workshop. The evidence, the research, is for people with type 2 diabetes. So um, the research isn't for someone who has type 1 diabetes, but it never hurts for someone with type 1 diabetes to go through this workshop because it's kind of like that motivation, getting back on the wagon and you know, getting back into those healthy habits. Um, for chronic pain path, anyone who identifies as having chronic pain is welcome to attend. We don't say, well, what condition do you have? Um, it's really just based on your own um, self-diagnosis or you know, uh, believing you have chronic pain. And caregivers are also welcome to attend too. So um, like, let's say you're married. So I mean, they're not necessarily your caregiver, but you're married and you have diabetes. That person doesn't have diabetes, but it still affects your household because that affects what you eat on a daily basis and that affects the person or persons you live with. So they're welcome to attend as well. Welcomed and encouraged to attend as well. Whoops, I think I pressed the wrong button. In fact, I know I did. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I pressed that one and not that. Ah, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? <laughs> um, okay. So um, these are all the topics that Diabetes Path and Chronic Pain Path have in common. Because they were developed by the same university, they have kind of the same structure. Um, so all of these topics are discussed in both workshops. So it's kind of like the, the social aspects of dealing with chronic disease, um, difficult emotions, depression, stress management, relaxation, positive thinking, healthy eating, physical activity, medications, communication, working with your doctor. Um, all of that is discussed in both programs. Um, additional topics um, that are specific to the conditions are listed here. So of course, Diabetes Path has a big emphasis on healthy eating. Um, menu planning, how do you take care of your feet? How do you manage sick days You know when you're not feeling so well and your blood sugar's haywire? Um, monitoring your blood sugar, um, for chronic pain path, um, we talk about like what is chronic pain? How, how is that interpreted in the brain? Um, and we also talk about what is diabetes? <laughs> because a lot of people who have diabetes were never explained what diabetes is and what is it doing to your body so they don't really necessarily grasp what's happening and what the importance is of monitoring and healthy eating and physical activity and all of those things your doctor says, but you don't necessarily understand why. So we go through what it is. Um, we talk about for chronic pain, um, the mind and body connection, distraction techniques. We do um, what's called the Moving Easy program, which is about 20 minutes of actual physical activity that um, is done at your level. But it's really like a gentle moving flexibility program. So we're not getting on the floor. We're not doing jumping jacks. We're not doing squats. We're doing more of like a flexible moving program to illustrate that even the gentlest movements of relaxing muscles makes a really big difference in chronic pain. Because sometimes it's not just, it's not the pain condition that's making you in pain when you move. It's those tense muscles because you haven't moved them. You haven't stretched them. So the Moving Easy program is to illustrate that. Um, and it really gets the wheels turning of like, oh, I can do some physical activity. I can't maybe walk around the block, but I can do this, right? Um, there's three <clears throat> pillars of the program for um, both of those programs, Diabetes Path, Chronic Pain Path, and Powerful Tools for Caregivers. And that is decision-making, problem-solving, and action planning. So these are life skills, right? We make decisions every day, um, whether it's big or small. Um, we problem solve every day. Um, and um, maybe we don't make action plans, but that is something that we practice a lot in the workshops. Um, a lot of times we may have a goal or an action plan to you know, exercise three days a week and then it rains and we say, oh, well, I couldn't exercise, it rained. So that's kind of, uh, that's a barrier. And so we talk about, okay, how do we problem solve that? 
right? We can't change the weather, but how can we work around that so you can still achieve what you wanted to achieve um, while, the, while it's raining outside, right? So action plans are something we talk about every week. It's something we do at the end of each session and it puts into practice what we talk about. Um, so it's not just, oh, healthy eating's important. This is what healthy eating should be. It's, okay, what are you gonna do to you know, implement whatever change you want? It doesn't have to be relating to healthy eating, but it's whatever you want to do. So the most important thing with an action plan, and, and think of an action plan as just a weekly goal. We meet once a week, so today's Tuesday, so let's say we met Tuesday afternoon. What are you gonna do from this Tuesday afternoon to next Tuesday afternoon when we meet again um, to, to improve your life in whatever fashion you want? You know, it, it can be literally anything you want. The, the most important thing is it's something you want to do. Um, if, if you set a goal of something you don't want to do, what's going to happen? It is not gonna happen because you don't wanna do it. If your husband says, oh, I really think you should eat, you know, broccoli instead of potato chips, you know, does that help? No, <laughs> right? Um, it's something that you want to do. Um, that's the most important thing. It's not something you think you should do. It's not something someone else thinks you should do. It's something you actually do want to do. Um, and then you answer the questions um, on the screen. What are you gonna do? How much are you gonna do it? Um, when are you gonna do it and how often? So a good example is I'm going to check my blood sugar, which is the what, once, which is how much, in the morning, which is when, four days a week, which is how often. Um, and then you assign how confident you are in that you're going to do that whole action plan in a week. Um, on a scale of zero to 10, zero being you're not confident at all, to 10 being you're totally confident you can do it. Um, and we want your confidence level to be at a seven or more, um, and that's because research has showed if it's less than that, it's likely you're not going to do it. And the point of making these action plans is not to make an action plan and come back and say I failed, it's to say, um, hey, I did my action plan and I'm really proud of myself um, because when that happens, we're more likely to make another action plan and another action plan and that is a snowball effect into behavior change, right? But it has to start with something you actually want to do. So um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, when I facilitate these workshops, I make an action plan right along with everybody else. Um, and it's something that I want to do. And everybody else's action plan is something they want to do. It doesn't even have to pertain to diabetes. It doesn't have to pertain to what we talked about that week. It's literally just something you want to do. Because when we, when we make and achieve a goal, we're more likely to do it again and again and again. So there is some suggested homework. You don't need to read, be able to read this, but it's just to illustrate that um, there is some suggested reading that goes along with, um, uh, with the program. So we talk about everything in the workshop, but it's not school. We're not on page 53 of the book at any point in time, right? It's, um, we're in a, a workshop that's very interactive, and then there's some suggested reading afterwards while you're at home and have free time to um, reinforce what is discussed. Um, so there's just some suggested reading and also a few other things that is suggested just to reinforce what we talk about. These are the books that we use, which are up here, so if you wanna take a look at them you know, afterwards, feel free to do that. Um, these were written specifically for the workshop too. So the authors of the program are the authors of the book. Um, it's not a textbook. Again, we're not in school, right? Um, but it's supposed to be like a supplemental information. So switching gears, uh, matter of balance, uh, managing concerns about falls is a fall prevention workshop um, designed for anyone who's concerned or fearful of falls. Um, a few folks raised their hand saying they think it's um, you know, normal to fall as we age and that is a misconception we talk about day one in this workshop. It is not normal to fall as we age. It shouldn't just be accepted as a normal part of aging. There are a lot of things that are normal you know, in aging, um, slowing down, um, but, um, but falling is not one of them. 
So we really um, tried to reinforce that we want to get to the root of um, why we're falling. Um, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy too. You know, if you're concerned about falls or maybe you've fallen or have heard a terrible story of a friend who fell and broke their hip and wound up in the hospital in a nursing home, then you're maybe a little more cautious, right? And you're maybe doing things less and less and less. Um, and um, that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, we're trying to encourage everyone to be cautious, yet um, do the things you want to do. You know, do the things that are give you good quality of life. Don't let the fear of falling restrict what you do um, because you're afraid of falling. Be cautious, and we talk about how to do that, but don't let it kind of take over um, your life, right? And that happens a lot. I see that, you know, working... Um, with uh, the, um, the older population, um, uh, it happens a lot. Um, and so that's what we're really trying to avoid. Um, this is not an exercise class. It's mostly discussion with some exercises. Um, anyone who's concerned about falls, fearful of falls, has fallen in the past, or really just wants to be more proactive, um, is um, welcome to attend this workshop. We've had people in their 50s and 60s take this workshop. This is not for the old, old, right? This is for um, anybody. Um, and someone, I was having a conversation with someone who um, went through the workshop a few months ago and said, you know, we were the youngest by a good 10 years, but it was still really helpful because um, it got that motivation going. You know, it's like, oh, I should have, I should do X, Y, and Z to modify my home, but this really gave me the oomph to do it, right? So sometimes we just need that motivation. Um, with the group. So these are the topics that are covered um, in the eight sessions. So this is an eight session workshop. We meet two hours um, per session. Um, uh, so you can kind of see, you know, what we discuss. We talk about, you know, just kind of like, what are your thoughts about falls? You know, I'm just kind of like I asked you about um, is falls, are falls normal? Uh, we, there's a whole list of um, statements that we go through, like, do you agree to this? Do you disagree? Kind of, you know, where are you in that? Um, we talk about exercise and fall prevention. Of course, it's a big part of the workshop. Um, we talk about assertiveness, um, being assertive and not aggressive, um, and um, uh, differentiating between those two. We look at our habits, day-to-day um, -day habits. We look at our home. We look at our community environment. And um, we see you know, what we can improve upon um, to prevent falls from happening. There, as I said, um, these programs aren't, aren't necessarily um, uh, facilitated by occupational therapists or physical therapists, right? These are facilitated by by people who have a common interest in this. Um, but we recognize there are going to be some questions um, that a physical therapist needs to address, and that's why we have a physical therapist come in for at least one hour um, to address specific concerns that participants may have. So um, there are some exercises that we do in the workshop, although it's not an exercise class. Um, the exercises last about 20 to 30 minutes or so, and we do them six of the eight sessions that we meet. So you can see it's about a quarter of the time um, that we um, are together, we do exercise. And this is a picture, not of a workshop that we did, but it's just an internet picture um, of something that we do do. It's just like a good good morning stretch, just kind of stretching. Um, it's the very first thing we do and the very last thing we do. Um, but we do um, exercises that help with coordination, balance, stability, you know, et cetera. Um, a lot of the exercises, people think, well, what does that have to do with fall prevention? Um, like, uh, like hand, like, um, uh, I forget what we call this, just like finger spread is what we call this. Um, you think, well, what, what does that have to do with fall prevention? Does anyone have a guess? Yeah. Um, we do that in the silver sneakers. It's called a coordination. Helps you with coordination, but we use a ball. A ball? Yeah. yeah Great. And, you know, what the, we use our fingers to it all the time. Mm-hmm. Silver sneakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, a, a, an excellent answer. Um, also, if you um, go up a... 
a staircase and need to hold on to a railing, but you can't grip the railing. You know, how are you, and you fall because you can't physically actually grip the railing. It's not necessarily a balance issue, but it's a fall risk because your hands don't have that grip. So it's things that we really don't think about in our day to day that are, um, that come out in this workshop. And people think, ah, oh, what does that have to do with fall prevention? There's a reason all of these things are in the workshop. Um, there's a workbook that goes along with the workshop. Um, everything that we go through is in that workbook and that's all you need to participate in the workshop and we send that to you. Powerful tools for caregivers, um, switching gears again. Um, this is a workshop for anyone who is a caregiver, um, as long as you're non-professional, non-paid, so you can be caring for a spouse, an aging parent, a neighbor, a friend, um, whomever. It could be across the country, it could be right in your own home, but this workshop is focusing on self-care for you as the caregiver, because that is the first thing to go when you start taking care of somebody else. So um, the workshop will give the caregiver all the different tools to help them with their day-to-day -day stress, um, helping them relax, dealing with difficult emotions. Um, anger, guilt, depression are the top difficult emotions that are expressed by caregivers, especially caregivers of someone with dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, depression is very high in those caregivers. Um, so this workshop really focuses on you, um, whereas most of the time you're focused on that other person. Um, so the six weeks is all about you as the caregiver. We also don't talk about um, the condition your care receiver has or the person you're caring for. Like we don't talk about necessarily dementia, Parkinson's disease, um, because again, it's focused on you and not that person. Um, the book that we use, um, again, is up here. It's called The Caregiver Help Book. Um, it was written specifically for this workshop, goes hand in hand with it. Um, so um, a really great resource. And just a quick mention of creating confident caregivers. Um, I, I manage all four of the previous workshops I mentioned. So I'm pretty much the point person at Tri-County for those um, four. Creating confident caregivers, um, I currently do not manage, um, but we do have, so I wanna make sure that you're aware that we offer this as well. Um, this is a workshop for only caregivers of um, someone with dementia, Alzheimer's, memory loss, that type of thing. And it's only for caregivers that, are, um, that have that person living in the community at home. So they're not in a nursing home, not in a care facility. It's you know, community dwelling um, caregivers and um, the person with memory loss or dementia. And it focuses specifically on that disease condition. You know, how do I manage these behaviors? How do I manage my expectations? Um, so I'm not climbing up the wall and the person that I'm caring for isn't um, climbing up the wall either. Um, so there is a little bit about self-care in that workshop, um, but if you're more interested in self-care, powerful tools for caregivers is the one to attend. This is really focused strictly on dementia and memory loss. So a good question you pose, well, how do I know about these workshops? When are you offering them? Um, so up on the screen, I have all the dates and times we're offering them. As I mentioned, they um, are not in person yet. And I am really bummed about that because they're so much more fun in person. Um, this is the first like in-person thing that I've gone to in a really long time, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, and um, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm sad to say that we're not doing them in person yet, but hopefully, fingers crossed, one day. So Zoom is where it's at right now. Um, for our diabetes program, we do have a um, phone option, which is more self-study. Um, it's only a one hour a week for six weeks versus two and a half. Um, for six weeks. Um, and that's really for folks who don't have Zoom, don't wanna do Zoom, et cetera. Um, but you can see the dates and times that we have um, these workshops being offered in the fall. Um, also, because everything is virtual, 
The great thing is um, there's other programs that we do not directly offer, um, but our counterparts in other parts of the state offer. So Tri-County Office on Aging is only one of 16 area agencies on aging in Michigan. So what we do here in Clinton, Eaton, and Ingham counties is pretty much identical to what all the other 15 agencies do across the state. And all 16 agencies do things different. <laughs> and we offer different programs. Because everything's virtual right now, um, you can attend other workshops that we don't offer, um, uh, specifically here at, in Tri-County. So um, the ones that we don't specifically offer here is regular path. I say regular because that's um, for any chronic disease. So if you have arthritis and want to learn more about how do I manage just my chronic condition, regular path would be um, where you want to go. Um, cancer path. Um, anyone who is a survivor of cancer or currently going through cancer treatments or you know whatever the case may be, um, Region 2 Area Agency on Aging in Jackson, they offer that program. So any one of you could attend that if you wanted to. Um, aging Mastery Program. Um, I don't know a lot about this program, but I've, it's been explained to me that it's kind of like a um, get ready for retirement type of workshop where it's um, 10 sessions and each session there's kind of like a guest speaker. Um, one's about medications, one is healthy eating, one is I think financial you know, planning and things like that. Um, and then there's two other um, uh, exercise programs um, that our counterparts offer as well. Silver Sneakers, which was mentioned earlier, um, Silver Sneakers Stability and Arthritis Foundation Exercise Programs. Um, so those are available to Tri-County residents. We kind of have an agreement um, with the statewide agencies to offer that to, you know, all residents of Michigan. Um, so you could attend any of them. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but yes, it's all on our website. Um, I, of course, didn't bring business cards because I don't go anywhere anymore. Um, so, um, but my information is there. Um, you can jot down my phone number, my email address, or if any one of those programs sound good to you, um, just come see me. Um, I'll jot down your information, and then we can just stay in touch with the next workshop if this doesn't work for you, or register you for the workshop, or if you're interested in one of the ones that I'm not offering specifically, I can give you the contact information to the person who does. So, um, questions? <laughs>